a uniformly charged ring with radius r and net charge positive q is in the xz plane. The center of the ring is at the origin. What is the magnitude and direction of the electric field at this location, a distance y above the center of the ring? We know that the field produced by a point charge can be found using the Coulomb's law E equals to kq over r squared. However, this ring of charge is not a point charge. So what do you think we have to do? We have to chop this ring of charge into extremely small pieces. For example, this little bit of charge delta q or dq on the ring is a point charge. So we know how to find the electric field produced by this point charge at that location. So now this little bit of charge dq is our point charge that's producing the field. So this point charge now is the dq and a little bit of charge gives us a little bit of electric field dE. To find the total electric field by the ring, we just have to find the dE produced by every bit of a dQ on the ring and then add them together. This means the electric field E equals to the integral of dE. To integrate means to add. So we're adding all of the dEs produced by all of the dQs on the ring. Because electric field is a vector, we have to add dE by adding vectors. In this case, it can be easier for us to integrate by component. This ring is uniformly charged with positive Q. What do you think is the direction of the electric field above the center of the ring? By symmetry, we know that the net electric field above the center of this ring must go upward because the field should go out of a positive charge. So the net electric field's x component and the z component must be zero. We only need to do integration to find the y component. The field's y component comes from the integral of dE's y component. And the dE is the field produced by the point charge dQ. Let's say for this point charge dQ, the electric field dE produced by it is uh, that way because it's a positive charge, so it goes out of the positive charge. So the dE over here points that way. To find the dE's y component, we just have to multiply the dE by a cosine or a sine of an angle. If that angle there is theta, that means the dE's y component is dE times cosine theta because the component going in the y direction is adjacent to the angle, so it's cosine theta. So here we have dE, that is k dQ over r squared, so it's k dQ, the point charge over r squared. The r is the distance between the point charge and the location we're interested in. So this distance right here is the r. And the r is not given, but we can find the r because we know this thing is y and this is the radius r. So what do you think r is? r is uh, the square root of uh, y squared plus big R squared. We use Pythagorean theorem to find the hypotenuse of this right triangle. And then we multiply this by cosine theta. Anything that's a constant can be taken out of the integral. What do you think we can take out of this integral? k is a constant we can always take out. And in this particular case for the ring, for every dq on the ring, the r is the same, the little r. The distance is the square root of y squared plus big R squared. We get this distance. It's the same for every point charge on the ring. So this is a constant we can take out. What about cosine theta? If that's theta, this will be theta here. And for every point charge on the ring, it's going to be the same angle. So cosine theta is also a constant we can take out. So we have k cosine theta out, and then the square root and the square, they cancel. So I have y squared plus r squared 
in the denominator, and then we're left with the integral of dq. To integrate means to add. We're adding all of the pieces of dq together for the entire ring. So what do you think this is? When we add all of the pieces of dq on the ring together, we get the total charge, the positive q. And then this will be our answer, except for that the theta is not given. That means uh, we cannot answer in terms of theta. We'll have to replace the cosine theta with what is given. If that is theta, that means this angle is theta. So we have a right triangle over here. And cosine theta is adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So let's see, we have basically now k q over y squared plus r squared times cosine theta. And the cosine theta is the adjacent side. For this right triangle, the adjacent side will be y. The hypotenuse is little r, but little r is not given, so we cannot use little r over here. We have to use Pythagorean theorem again find, to find the r. So this is this, the square root of uh, a squared plus uh, b squared. So this is the strength of the field at there. If you like to, you can simplify this. If you simplify this, we'll get, you will get kq times y times uh, 1 over y squared plus r squared to the 3 halves.